The history of money begins in ancient times, when commodity relations arose between people. But over time, this method of trading became obsolete, as a result of which various exchange elements began to be used, hence the first money appeared. The history of the emergence of money began 7-8 thousand years BC. It is no secret that gold has always been the best way to preserve your capital from ancient times to the present day, or not. And in this video, you will see archaeological finds that will surprise you. Hi friends, you're on the Kurtop channel. Wandering Tablet Every treasure hunter dreams of finding a gold object, but in this case, the value of the metal is not as important here as what is written on it. A plate of gold 10.8 by 5 cm and 0.8 mm thick, dated to the period of Ptolemy III, was discovered by underwater archaeologist Franco Godio during excavations of the sunken ship of Heraklion in 2003. The plate is engraved with Greek text in a dotted style, which took a long time to decipher. Experts found out that this plate was dedicated to Ptolemy III, Avagret, and his family. It had a memorial value and was buried near the walls of an important building and signed by those who led the construction. After thorough cleaning and restoration, Professor Manfred Klaus was able to read the entire text of the dedication. Rule of Ptolemy, of Ptolemy and Arsino, brother gods, hands over this gymnasium to Hercules for his own and Queen Baroness, his sister and wife and their children. Hercules was worshipped as the patron saint of athletics, and since the Hellenistic period, almost every gymnasium had an altar or statue dedicated to the god. Warrior in armor in Japanese Pompeii Few people know about excavations carried out in Japan at the site of three cities that existed until the middle of the 6th century, until two consecutive strongest volcanic eruptions on Mount Haruna buried them under a layer of pumice stone more than 2 meters thick. But recently, they also gave a sensational result, although much less well known. Experts conducting excavations have discovered a warrior in armor who apparently died during the eruption covered by a pyroclastic flow. The found warrior was wearing armor known as Kiko, Henina armor. It was a Japanese version of the classic East Asian lamellar armor made of interconnected plates attached to the shoulders. It should be noted that the armor of the warrior was not complete, but the second part of the armor was found nearby about 3 meters away. It is curious that, judging by the position, the warrior was on his knees facing the volcano and did not try to escape. Experts speculated that it was a certain dignitary who may have prayed, facing the erupting volcano, to calm his anger. It should be noted that this is the first finding of Kiko and humans. Prior to that, all found armor of this type were found in tombs. The Mystery of the Goldfish this remarkable fish pendant, an example of the great craftsmanship of jewelers during the Middle Kingdom, also contains magic that was part of the life of the ancient Egyptians and which they enclosed in a wide variety of objects. The hanging loop is pulled from the mouth of the fish, which would hang vertically. Even though the pendant is only 4 cm long, it features amazing details, including the pores that create what is known as a lateral line on the sides, a sharp ray on the dorsal fin, spots on the head, a ridge of small spines on each side between the eyes and the triangular operculum, and the antennae that protrude from the mouth. The naturalistic depiction of the fish identifies it as a Cynodontus bait soda, also known as inverted catfish. This species of catfish often swims upside down and very close to the surface. Modern scholars know that the ancient Egyptians observed unusual behavior of this fish, and it was important in their system of religious symbolism. Usually, fish pendants depict either an inverted catfish or a tilapia. As watchful observers, the ancient Egyptians often associated a certain natural phenomena with certain ideas, for example, the Nile catfish. Its stretched position in the water resembles a dead fish swimming belly up on the surface, but, on the other hand, it is clearly alive, and the search for such a visual unity of opposites is very characteristic of the Egyptians, who were looking for any way to convey the idea that death is just a phase of existence, not the end. Tilapias were a symbol of fertility, as well as youth and a blissful life full of pleasures, primarily sensual, as these fish carry their eggs in their mouth until they fry hatch. Toilet 2700 years old 
Israeli archaeologists have unearthed a private stone toilet built from limestone during excavations of a supposed ancient royal estate in Jerusalem. According to scientists, an extremely rare find of the 7th century BC highlights the wealth of the homeowner. Apparently, there was a garden of ornamental and fruit plants next to the toilet. Archaeological excavations in Jerusalem are subject to great difficulties, despite the interest of scientists, since a significant part of the objects are shrines belonging to different religions. The restrictions associated with possible disturbances in the fillings of believers up to 1960s did not allow for systematic layer-by-layer -layer excavations, limiting themselves only to individual sites. A stone toilet was in the bathroom and was installed above a deep cesspool. An ancient limestone toilet with a hole in the center designed for comfortable seating. In addition, archaeologists were able to find decorated stone capitals as well as small columns. 2,000-years-old slab in the town of Beit Sherim, Israel, there is a huge slab in a cave near the ancient city cemetery. Its width is 2 meters, length 3.5 meters, and thickness 1.5 meters. The weight is about 9 tons. At the time of discovery, the workers thought they were seeing a concrete slab. It was planned to crush it. For some unknown reason, the idea was abandoned. The artifact remained in place. The surrounding area was asphalted because the work on the construction of the museum was carried out in the cave. A piece was broken up from the stove and sent to the laboratory for further study. The results greatly surprised everyone. The slab was not a stone, but glass. Its approximate age was 1,600 years. And although chemical analysis has confirmed that it is glass, the stove doesn't all look like a glass in the usual sense. The object looks like a huge block of limestone, completely opaque, bluish-gray in color. In the 9th century, there was a glass furnace which produced large batches of glass. They were cooled and then broken into small fragments to make glass vessels. People have been making glass for at least 6 centuries. The earliest items from this material are beads. They were made from glass that was accidentally produced as byproduct of metal processing. These early pieces were seldom translucent. Real glass, familiar to us, appeared in the 15th century. It was made in large blocks. They were then transported to various workshops. Glass making was a complex process that took a lot of time and effort. The ingredients used often contained impurities that were difficult to recover. Their presence greatly changed the glass. The arch over the tank fell into the molten slurry. Because of this, the lime content in the future glass has doubled. In other words, a manufacturing defect happened and the further use of this glass plate was simply abandoned, leaving it at the production site for many centuries. The remains of a warrior with a golden jaw the skull and lower jaw of a Byzantine warrior were discovered during excavations of the fortress of Palestinian in western Thrace, Greece, in 1991. Studies have shown that the men lived in the 14th century and participated in the defense of the fortress from the Ottomans. After the battle, when the fortress was captured by enemy troops, the head was buried separately from the body. A new study showed that the warrior's lower jaw was shattered and long before his death. To restore it, the ancient healer used a wire, most likely gold. It had to help the jaw to heal properly. The wire itself has not survived, but the researchers believe that it was gold. Silver or other metal would leave traces. Probably such a complex surgical intervention was required for a person of high social status, perhaps a military leader. The cause of the jaw fracture is unclear. Researchers can only speculate that the injury could have resulted from a fall while riding, or being hit by a spear or other weapons during combat. The man received a mutilation 10 years before his death in about 1373. At the time of his death, the warrior was between 35 and 40 years old. An ancient weight for cheating in trade Archaeologists working in the northern part of the city of David in Old Jerusalem have discovered a weight about 2,700 years old in the main drainage channel at the base of the Western Wall. According to experts, it was these weights that were once used to deceive traders. This found weight with a diameter of only 14 millimeters is only the second such specimen which was ever discovered in Israel. It is made of hard, smooth, well-polished reddish limestone and has two parallel lines on the top, indicating that it weights two here which is 0 0.944 grams in modern units. However, in reality the weight of the kettlebell turned out to be three times more than it was written on it, at least 3.61 grams. As experts explain, this discrepancy is explained by the fact that the weight could be used in trade to deceive people. 
Carrying heavy and light weights, merchants use them appropriately when buying and selling goods. It is worth noting that this type of fraud was even described in some detail in the Bible, in which it is very sharply criticized. Do not have two different measures in the house, one large and one small. You must have accurate scales and measures so that you can live long on the earth that the Lord gives you. For the Lord hates anyone who does their things, anyone who acts dishonestly. Subject Guard Status these are the most impressive examples of great Seljuk art. Relatively many are known of these stages, but the two warriors from the Metropolitan Museum of Art are by far the best. The material for all these sculptures was gypsum. Their sizes are very different, those in the metro are almost human-sized, others are much smaller. Of many figures, only their heads have survived. Almost all these statues date back to the time of the Great Seljuk Sultanate and come from Iran. It is assumed that many of them stood in the capital of the Seljuks, the city of Ray, now a suburb of Tehran. The figures are made in high-relief technique, i.e. from behind they were attached to the surface of the walls of the palace. Unfortunately almost all the figures were at one time stolen from iron by various buyers of antiquities, I almost all of them are devoid of an archaeological context, which undoubtedly greatly diminishes our knowledge of the art of the Seljuk Turks. Based on the analysis of the appearance of the sculptures, we can conclude that these figures are in many ways related to the Turkic steppe stone women, status of nomads who used to stand throughout the steppe from Mongolia to Ukraine, including they are similar to the Palatian stone status. This similarity is evidenced by the general shape of the status, the position of the hands, head, and details of clothing. The difference is only in the quality of the images. The Seljuk figures were created by masters from Persia and Central Asia, so they carry more of the local Iranian style. These status are a synthesis of the art of the steppe and Iranian sedentary worlds. The fact that these are the warriors can be seen from the broad swords that they hold in their hands, and it can be assumed that their striped robes are actually long flat plate art armor, typical of Turkic warriors. Most likely, these plaster figures depicted the Sultan's guard, the ceremonial guard of the palace in Rhea. The world's largest triceratops skeleton a trial auction will take place in Paris this fall to sell the skeleton of a giant triceratops. Before the sale, anyone will be able to look at the remains of more than 66 million years old, which will be exhibited in the capital of France for a month. The skeleton of a formidable ancient lizard was nicknamed Big John. Its skull is striking in its gigantic size. It reaches 2.62 meters in length and 2 meters in width. The two large horns are 1.1 meters long and more than 30 centimeters wide at the base. Each of these horns is capable of withstanding a pressure of 16 tons. The dinosaur has a laceration on the collar. Experts attribute its origins to a fight with a smaller member of his species who injured Big John. They might not have divided the territory of the female Elan themselves, and the auction will take place on October 21st. Experts estimated between 1.2 million and 1.5 million euros. In 2018, the skeleton of a carnivorous theropod, more than 150 million years old, was sold for 2 million euros. And in 2020, in the United States, the Tyrannosaurus skeleton went under the hammer for a record 31.8 million dollars. Heavy machinery from ancient times Ancient societies had access to high technology, and as an example to support this assumption, we recall today an interesting gold object that was discovered in Panama in the 1920s. At first, the object known as a bulldozer or a zoomorphic pendant from Panama attracted very little attention. It has been nailed as nothing more than another Jaguar model. However, it was soon suggested that this might be a design for a heavy construction machine such as a steam shovel-like excavator. Suppose for a moment that the object is an animal, but why is it so flat and angular? The Jaguar's tail appears to be exceptionally strong and has two large cogwheels at the end. This artifact is only 4.5 inches long, however, it is covered with various mechanical devices. This prehistoric machine with claws and legs and a chain mechanism attached to cogwheels at its end, if built on a large scale, could be used as an earth-moving excavator. Was the zoomorphic pendant from Panama created as a reminder of what the ancients once saw? Pill down fly if you look closely at the piece of Baltic amber in this photo, you can see a perfectly preserved fly inside. This specimen is kept in the London Natural History Museum. 
It is dated to the Eocene and is an absolutely unique fossil, not only because there is no another such find, but also because there are very few fossilized flies in general. Insects are rather poorly preserved. Many microscopes use incandescent light bulbs in their lighting systems, and some metal parts of the instrument get hot enough over long hours to fry eggs. As a rule, such parts are more dangerous for the scientists themselves than for their stone objects of study, but not in the case of amber. The priceless specimen is cracked. Frustrated and frightened, the researcher began to examine the crack and noticed a strange feature. The crack was too smooth. Upon further study, it turned out that the piece of amber consisted of two parts glued with resin, in the cavity between which a completely modern fly was laid. The story made it to the press, and the pseudo-fossil was quickly dubbed the Piltdown Fly, after the Piltdown Man, another famous fossil fake of the early 20th century. Who faked the fly remains a mystery. The Piltdown Fly has been fooling scientists for nearly 150 years, more than any other fake fossil in the history of science. White Clay Figurine of Venus In the center of the British city of Gloucester, a major commercial center is planned, and the preparatory work includes archaeological research. Checking the area for its historical value, archaeologists have discovered a 1,800-year-old figurine of the goddess Venus. Such products were not typical for ancient England, but in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, they were made in central France and in the southwestern part of Germany on the basis of the white clay present in these places. The figurine belongs to this period. Most likely, it stood in the home sanctuary as a patroness of love, beauty and fertility. It is almost perfectly preserved, with the exception of the base. In order not to miss the next video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. And without a kind comment, I see no reason to release a new video. Thanks for your views, bye everyone!